Hi, I'm John Levy from the Levy Shoulder Center at the Paley Orthopedic and Spine Institute. I'd like to talk to you today about what's involved with sh reverse shoulder replacement surgery. Before I get started, I have relevant disclosures relate to DJO Inovis. I've been working with DJO Inovis for over 15 years. I've consulted for them and taught surgeons all around the world how to do shoulder replacement surgery, and I've been a part of all their latest designs when it comes to designing the shoulder replacements that they produce. I'm obviously going to choose the right implant for you, and even if it means that I'm not using a DJO Inovis implant, I'm going to find the appropriate solution that fixes your problem. I also do not receive any financial benefit from any implant that I use on my own patients. This is a normal shoulder. There is space between the ball and socket, and the ball is centered on the socket. Cartilage covers the, joint, the bones that allow the joint to function normally. The rotator cuff are four muscles that are the deep muscles of the shoulder. They help to control strength, function, but more importantly, stability. They keep the ball centered on the socket. And this natural muscle balance between the rotator cuff and the outer muscle, the deltoid muscle, are necessary for shoulder motion to occur. The rotator cuff must compress the ball against the socket and allow the deltoid to power the arm to restore stability and function of the shoulder joint. When you're deficient in your rotator cuff, you lose that natural muscle balance. And so what happens is the deltoid helps to shift the shoulder out of place. It shifts the ball upwards and out of socket and often creates this anterior superior escape. And what the reverse shoulder replacement does is takes advantage of this deltoid muscle, allowing the socket to compress in the ball and rotate around that sphere. This is the essence of how a reverse shoulder replacement can be a game changer in restoring shoulder function. Some patients have various degrees of arthritis. As you develop a rotator cuff tear arthropathy, that is a common reason that leads you to a reverse shoulder replacement and you form arthritis not just in the ball and socket joint but on top of the shoulder as well. There are other patients that choose to have a reverse shoulder replacement for other variations of shoulder arthritis. And so there are many different pathways that lead to this, but the symptoms are very similar. Pain, worse with, with activity, often interfering with your sleep. May, patients often can get the sense of the shoulder being unstable, like it's dislocating. Loss of motion, atrophy of muscles, swelling, clicking, popping, grinding, and even tenderness around the shoulder are very common symptoms that we see. We always try to beat this without surgery for as long as we can. Anti-inflammatory medications, cortisone injections, physical therapy, modifying your life to avoid pain, and then some of the newer injections like platelet-rich plasma or stem cell injections or even visco supplementation, which has been shown to be effective in knees but not typically in shoulders, but there may be roles as we start to explore the use of these sort of alternative injections in trying to avoid surgery. But ultimately, when you get to the point when you can no longer tolerate it, you've hit your tipping point to say enough is enough, then we think of surgery. And I like to think of this as a quality of life decision. For some people, it interferes with activities like golf or tennis. But for a lot of patients, it's simple activities of daily living, like grooming, dressing, and bathing, sleeping, being able to work. Whatever that combination of symptoms are that gets to you that says, I'm done, that's enough for me. I've never told anybody they must have their shoulder replaced but it's a combination of these quality of life issues that leads people to make that decision. When it comes to surgery, I now operate at West Boca Medical Center, both in the hospital as well as, as their hospital outpatient department. The surgery is an outpatient operation. This comes from data. We studied our patients before and after the pandemic. We realized before, before the pandemic, only about a third of our patients would go home the same day. But when we studied the safety and the effectiveness of sending patients home the same day after surgery, we showed safe same-day discharges in terms of readmissions and any potential complications that we see immediately after surgery. That, combined with this multimodal pain management approach, really allows us to have confidence in sending our patients home the same day. Now, there are medical reasons that keep you in the hospital, and there may be specific circumstances where a medical reason drives a decision to stay in the hospital overnight. But far and large, we think of this as an outpatient operation, and we use a variety of these multimodal pain management approaches to help keep you comfortable. And that includes an interscaling nerve block given by the anesthetic, anesthesi anesthesiologist. This is in addition to a general anesthesia. 
cold therapy, a continuous cold therapy solution, anti-inflammatory medications, steroids, Tylenol, and even opioids. Although, I'll be, to be honest, it's very rare for patients to need strong narcotic opioid medications like Vicodin or Percocet for any more than a couple days after the operation. That would be the exception to the rule. Now, because we do this as a general anesthesia, it's important that you get medically cleared for the operation before the operation occurs, and it typically needs 30 days to get all of that together. Let's talk about the operation itself. So the surgery is done through what we call a deltopectoral incision. It's an incision plane that goes beneath the deltoid muscle. Often, there is a tendon of the subscapularis that needs to be moved out of the way. Then I can see the joint, remove a hemisphere of bone that we call the humeral head, shape the bones to match the parts, put the parts in, and when I'm done, we have a reconstructed shoulder that is a reverse shoulder replacement. The ball is anchored on the socket, and what used to be a ball becomes the socket. Recovery is divided into three phases. Healing, stretching, and then return to activity. Now during the healing phase, this is the time where we're protecting your shoulder. We typically place you in something like this, which we call an ultra sling. It's in a mobilized position that keeps the arm a little bit out to the side. And we may transition to you into what we call a shoulder immobilizer. For a period of six weeks, you'll be wearing a brace every day. Now you'll be able to take it off to do exercises, to change your clothes, to get in the shower. But most of the time, you're wearing this brace. Three times a day, I ask you to do your therapy. Now this is self-directed therapy. You're gonna do it on your own. Three times a day, you'll lean forward, you'll let your arm dangle, and you'll make circles the size of a pendulum. You can use your hands for activities that are immediately in front of you. Not for lifting or reaching, and certainly not for carrying, but just for things that are in front of you. Eating, brushing your teeth, um, uh, cutting and eating food, anything that's immediately in front of you is safe. The second six weeks are focused on stretching. We give you a new set of stretching exercises to work on improving your elevation, and your rotation. We're not allowing you to do lifting, nothing more than two pounds, and this is a stage where you're really working on restoring your motion. And that takes you to the third phase, and that third phase is a return to activity, gradual return to activity, and exercises that are focused on strengthening your deltoid. A very simple activity, lying on your back, moving your arm back and forth for a period of five minutes creates the endurance that you need to power the shoulder and allow you to restore your motion. Recovery can happen in different phases, and really it depends on what you're speaking specifically about when you ask about recovery. The recovery of pain relief is quick. Most of our patients are off pain medications very quickly, and they see the benefits, the pain relief benefits of the operation almost immediately. Function takes time, and a lot of that is, is driven by the restrictions that I place upon you as you're, doing, as you're walking through the recovery. But by the time you get to that six month mark, you're probably 80% through your recovery, and there's still a subtle improvement that occurs throughout the rest of the year. Now, one thing to really consider, and it's an important uh, point to, to really emphasize, this concept of internal rotation, the ability to reach your arm up your back. After a reverse shoulder replacement, there's only so much that that reverse shoulder replacement movement allows you to achieve. It is an unpredictable experience to figure out how much you're going to get in terms of how quickly you'll be able to reach up your back, and how much you'll ultimately be able to reach up your back. It's the single degree of motion that is most, high, most highly variable, and it can't, we were able to, to, to show that in one of the studies we published many years ago. I'm proud of this slide, which is really the ultimate success of surgery. If we survey our patients like we do, we ask patients, how would you rate your personal satisfaction with your surgery? The overall satisfaction rate is 97%. And that is really focused on improvement in pain, improvement in function, and return to independence. There's a very small percentage of patients that are truly unsatisfied with their operation. And this continues through one year, five year, and even some of our 10 year outcomes. People do get back to sports. Swimming, tennis, and golf are, are, are routinely done by my patients. We specifically studied golf and returning to racket sports, showing a very high rate of return to those sports if you're truly interested and even at a higher level of participation and enjoyment. Before surgery, I get a CT scan. Now that CAT scan is used for virtual simulation of your operation, predicting the optimal position of where your implant should go to be able to get the best outcome. Medical clearance has to be within 30 days of the operation. 
10 days after surgery, your sutures get removed. At six weeks, we go through those stretches. At, then we see you again at three months, six months, a year, and then once a year checks. No surgery is without risk, and I don't like to dwell on the bad and dwell on the risk of the operation. And depending on what we're treating, I'd say the, comp the, the risk of having a complication somewhere spans between 5 and 10 percent. But when you look at the ultimate levels of satisfaction, 2, 5, 10 years, and it's at a, in those high 90 percent of patient satisfaction, you can recognize that even if you get a complication, they typically are rescued. So we have solutions to manage the complications that you might have. That's all I have to say about reverse shoulder replacement. Please keep in mind, our team is always available to you. There are emails, uh, phone numbers, uh, plenty of opportunity to ask questions. Make sure you are very comfortable in making this ultimate decision, and I look forward to helping you along the way.